listen, there's actually two things that we can discuss today, you know, two big things, two huge topics. First, today is the 50th birthday of my favorite actress, and B, yesterday the Grammy Award ceremony took place. Okay, I, I see, I see, I won't make you wait on this one, so let's start with the most important thing, my favorite actress's birthday, yeah, today Jennifer Aniston is 50 years old, yeah, 50, it's hard to believe, I know, I know, but she still is 50, and today is also Thomas Je Jefferson, my gosh, Thomas Edison's birthday, so yeah, Thomas Edison would turn 172 years old today. Edison, with more than 1,000 patents in his name, is considered the fourth most prolific inventor in history. But Jennifer Aniston and Thomas Edison are very, very different, of course. One has incandesced thousands of bulbs, bringing the comfort to men all over the world, and the other is Thomas Edison. So, speaking of inventions, Thomas Edison was the guy who invented the phonograph which eventually made it possible to record the sounds uh, and noises, and now, 131 years later, some sounds and noises got their recognition at the 61st Grammy Award ceremony, which took place yesterday in Los Angeles, California. Anyways, Grammy is, you know, short for gramophone, so the gramophone awards, that's how the full name of this ceremony should sound, I guess. But what the heck is a gramophone? I hear you ask, and I'll give you a clue. The information about what is a gramophone you can find in books. But what the heck is books? I hear you ask, and I'll tell you. The books are some kind of papery blogs where you could get knowledge from back in the ancient day, which, as historians claim, has lasted from 1452 to 2002. That's actually the, you know, concrete date in history. And a lot of people have criticized uh, the Grammys for being out of touch, and you can see their point, because even, uh, even the name Grammy is short for the old record machine, and the word itself is some kind of old-timey, you know, record player with a big horn thing. You know, big old horny thing. Yeah, big old horny thing. Reminds you of anyone? So, I don't know. People say that the Grammys are out of touch, but I don't know, maybe if they think that Alicia Keys is a comedian, perhaps those people are right. But I'll be honest with you, I'm not really down with this decision to make Alicia Keys a host of the Grammys. The thing is, I believe that's job not for a musician, but for a comedian. You know, like Billy Crystal, Whoopi Goldberg, Jon Stewart, LL Cool J. Of course, of course, LL Cool J is a comedian. He's got one of the best rap artist impersonations in the business. That's, that's very funny. So, I'll tell you a little story here. I once hosted an award ceremony myself. Yeah, I was very young. I was like, you know, 19. And I believe it was some kind of merchant awards or bandit awards, which is pretty much the same thing in Russia. Yeah, it was on the New Year's Eve of 2006, and it took place in some, you know, nightclub in the northern distant district of the city. Originally, I was planned to only write a script of the ceremony, like, you know, a two-hour long scenario with jokes and sketches, but then it turned out that the host suddenly got sick. He caught cold, or maybe he caught a dagger in his back. These things, you know, happens in the noble world of Russian merchants. So I was immediately appointed as a new host. I arrived in the club, and the first thi and the first thing that these bandits did, they demanded that I go and take a seat somewhere in the audience because the owner of this club wanted, you know, to give an opening speech in the beginning. Uh, so, I have no idea why. Maybe he didn't have a daughter, so he physically couldn't hold her wedding ceremony and instead just held this. I don't know. So, I took a seat in the audience, you know, in the front row, and then a couple of minutes later, some man came over and he asked, Hey, are you a seat filler? And I said, um, uh, I don't know, technically I suppose yes, but... And then I started to think, a seat filler. Maybe it's a euphemism for something else especially in this, you know, criminal world. But luckily enough, right when this gangster was about to check if I was really a seat filler, the club owner finished his speech and invited me to the stage, so 
The long story short, being a master of ceremony is a hard work. You don't really want it, believe me. The problem with going to the worst ceremonies as a host is that you know that everybody who sees you is disappointed that it's you. That's exactly like hosting this show. You can ask Lydia. So please, don't think that I'm just, you know, bragging here and insisting that I could be a much better host for the Grammys than Alicia. No, not me. Because let's be honest, if you're in the audience of the Grammy or something like that, are you there to see the host? No. You're going to see the Grammys to see rock stars and models. You don't go to the Grammys to see some overweighted guy who still has troubles with his aching field seat. Perhaps I, I just said too much. But you know what can't be too much? Some free money can't be too much. Here's our Grand Prix for today. Show them the money. Come on. Yeah, exactly. $1,000 is here for you. So let's imagine something, something in the palm of my hands, right here. A phone, a mobile phone, a smart, smartphone. So right on the screen of your smartphone, there will be a question. After it appears, you have like, I don't know, 12 seconds to decide which of the following three answer choices is correct. You made your decision, then just tap the button with the correct answer, in, in your opinion, correct answer. So uh, that's actually the process that you must go through. Uh, I don't know, 12 times in a row. You can't start answering on question number 4 or number 2 or number 11, just 12 questions in a row, from the first one to the final one. So it is okay to be wrong at least once because you have a bonus life from the start of the game and as many friends as you bring in. That's actually how many bonus lives you can have during one broadcast. But you can use only two of them, so the more friends you bring in, the more bonus lives you've got. That's pretty, pretty simple. And what else? You can't use your extra bonus life during the final round, so only from the questions, from question number one to question number eleven. So let's take a look at our viewer count. Right now, we are watched by two thousand two hundred and seventy-nine people. Thanks for being here with us today. And actually, the chats just. They don't work. There's nothing on the screen for me, you know. I know that some kind of technical difficulties that we're experiencing right now, but I, I, I do believe, I, I, I do hope that we'll fix that problem, that we will resolve that. But right now, sorry guys, I can't, I can't see you, Brayden. I don't know if you still demand this kind of, you know, t-shirt or polo shirt with our logo, but anyways, it's a great day for IQ Option, and it's a great day to expand your financial knowledge, and therefore, it's time to play the game. Here comes question number number one. Here we go. An economy that has no trade activity with outside economies is called open economy, closed economy, or black economy. So please let me remind you that that's actually the final spot. So you wouldn't have any other chance. You won't have it in about five seconds. I mean, no chances to, to join us and to eventually win some money. Just now or never. It's like two, one, it's done. You're out. If you didn't tap this thing, you, you're out. So business activity in which people buy and sell goods illegally without paying tax is called the black economy. An economy in which there are economic activities between the domestic community and outside is an open economy. If a self-sufficient economy also refuses all trades with the outside world, then it's, a, then it's called a closed economy. And 1,503 people knew the correct answer. And here it comes, our chat just said, oi. <laughs> That's exactly what we've been screwing here while our chat wasn't working. Oi! And now it's all good again. Luckily. Thank God. And here comes question number two. Crude oil, gas, and metals belong to this group of assets. Stocks, indices, or commodities. And right away, let's take a look at our chat. LIW asks... Tiru Tiruski, I have no idea what this thing can mean. I have no idea at all. So here comes uh, here comes a couple of clues about 
bleach uh, answer choice, you you know you should have choose like you know six seconds before. Maybe you you did exactly the same thing. So Airbus, BP, Barclays, and other companies are examples of stocks. AU200, SP35, JP225, and the likes are indices. A basic good used in commerce that is, you know, interchangeable with other commodities of the same type is a commodity. Crude oil, gas, and metals are examples of commodities. And 1,474 people knew the correct answer. That's actually pretty... <clears throat> it's a decent result. It's a decent number. Thanks. Thank you for being so smart. And thank you for taking a look at our question number three. Which of these is a bank? Citigroup, Thyssenkrupp, or Tesla? That's actually my new thing, where my, my hand is out of shot. Hmm? The newest is the best. So perhaps I should try this one instead, like... So, Thyssenkrupp is a German Maltine... Ah, there's no difference. So Tyson Krupp is a German multinational conglomerate with focus on industrial engineering and steel production. Tesla is an American automotive and energy company. Citigroup, or Citi, is an American multinational investment bank and financial services corporation. So the correct answer to this question was clear to 1,328 people and that's actually... that's not bad. But I know that you can do better, so please smart up. Come on, question number four is here. This sign that you can see on the screens of your smartphones is the currency sign used for Ukrainian hryvnia, Turkish lira, or Russian ruble. And maybe let's take a look. No, maybe. Hello, bad game this is. That's what Easton R just said. That's actually a very decent sound opinion for a hockey stick. Thank you, Easton. The Hryvnia sign is a cursive Ukrainian letter he, with a double horizontal stroke, symbolizing stability. This symbol of the Turkish lira is composed of the letter L, shaped like a, you know, a half anchor, and embedded double street letter T angled at 20 degrees. The sign of the Russian ruble features a Cyrillic letter P with an additional horizontal stroke. And the correct answer to this question was clear to 711 people and please let me remind you right now, right on this spot, that if you gave a wrong answer, you have like, you know, five seconds to bring yourself back into the game. Just tap this, this thing right here, you know, that card shape button, and you're back in. Welcome, and here comes question number, number five, I believe. This is your retail sales index. Johnson Redbook Index, Genie Index, or Case Shiller Index. Mm, yeah, and you thought that would be so easy. Uh-huh, nope. We have something like that in store, yeah. So, the Gini Index is a statistical measure of, you know, distribution. It is often used as a gauge of economic uh, inequality. The Standard & Poor's Case Shiller Home Price Indices are repeat sales house price uh, indices for the United States of America. The Johnson Red Book Index is a weekly proprietary... <sighs> Proprietary Retail Price Index. It complies and analyzes comparable store sales at more than 9,000 stores in the United States of America. That's a brilliant broadcast by me today, and <laughs> that's actually comedy gold as well. And here comes, uh, here comes the exact number of uh, smart fellows who knew the correct answer, and it's like 524? Yeah, that's exactly... Uh, the number of people who will witness question number six, which is here. The difference between the bid and the ask price of an asset is called bond, spread, or margin. The four 
it's yours. Come on. Uh, let's take a look. Ah, uh, no, never mind. An official document promising that a government or a company will pay will pay back money that it has borrowed, often with interest, is a bond. In a general business context, the margin is the difference between a product or services selling price and the cost of production. The difference between the bid and the ask price of an asset is called a spread. And 492 people knew the correct answer, and um, I think that it's pretty much too early to remind you about your, your extra bonus thing here, yeah? It is too early. Alright, here comes question number 7. The smallest denomination of Ether is Wei, Won, or Satoshi. I believe that's how each and every episode after this one will look like. So, the one is the basic monetary unit of North and South Korea. The Satoshi is the smallest unit of the Bitcoin currency recorded on the blockchain. It is a, you know, 100 millionth of a single Bitcoin. The smallest denomination unit of Ether is called the Wei, after a cryptocurrency pioneer, Wei Dai. And I believe it is. So, there are no such indicators as the, you know, center of balance or the center of power. The indicator developed by John Ellers in 2002 used to identify potential turning points in the price as early as possible. It is called the center of gravity. And 256 people knew the correct answer, and that's actually, I don't know, you to decide. Is that good enough, huh? I'm not trying to, you know, to to put some shame on you. No, just just think about it. Could you do it better, huh? Just ask yourself. I believe you could. Question number ten has arrived. Let's take a look. What's the currency of the Comoros? Peso, pound, or franc? Ah, let's take a look at our chat, maybe, I don't know, should we, huh, I believe so. And there's nothing here, just tons of cheat codes, which don't work, and some numbers. So, I tried, you saw it, I tried, but there's nothing. The Comoros is an island, island country in the Indian Ocean located at the, you know, northern end of the Mozambique Channel. It became part of the French colonial empire at the end of the 19th century, right before becoming independent <laughs> in about, you know, like 80 years later. So the official currency of the Comoros is called the Comorian franc, and 256 people knew the correct answer, and please let me remind you for maybe the last time during this broadcast that maybe that's the point where you should hmm? Hmm? use your extra bonus life if you have one. So if you have one, use one. Here comes question number 11. Turkey's top export in 2017 was vehicles, iron and steel, Gems and precious metals. That's not like, you know, five answer choices, it's only three of them. Ah, chat, maybe, no, maybe, hello, Nathaniel H just said hello, finally. That's what I've been waiting for. Thank you, Nathaniel. Turkey shipped $157 billion worth of goods around the globe in 2017, including $8 billion worth of iron and steel, which is fifth place, nearly $11 billion worth of gems and precious metals, it is third place, and around $24 billion worth of vehicles, which is obviously the first place. And only 174 people knew the correct answer. It's about... <clears throat> it's about... 
a bit more, a bit better than, than I probably thought you you would go here. But <sighs> hey, Vic, Veronica, I'm just say hey, Vic, but it's still not that not that many people, you know, not that many smart people who actually knew the correct answer. I want you to to be to be at least four people more during the final round. So my bet is like 178 winners for today's game, but beat is always risky. Anyways, here comes our final round. Where was the Mississippi bubble scheme created? France, Britain, or the United States of America? So Britain here. It's always Britain. Talk about things like that. It's always Britain. Do you remember any kind of discussion where you didn't have Britain? I can't remember that. When the United States of America is the world leader of you know, finance things. There still can be friends, you know, love. Hold on. I almost got it, you know, but I almost cracked this one up. The Mississippi Bubble derives its name from the Mississippi Company. Economist John Law organized that trading company to assume control of Louisiana. Law's aggressive promotion of the company's stock led to wild speculation that drove the price of shares to high figures without any sound basis in tangible assets. In 1720, the company failed. John Law was a Scot and served as the French government, government's primary financial advisor. He engineered the Mississippi bubble scheme in France in order to solve France's financial problems. And the correct answer to this question, to the final one, was clear to, ha, huh, I was about right. 174 people, and these people will share our Grand Prix of $1,000. Exactly, so each and every one of you, smart fellows, will get $5.75. Isn't that incredible? It is free money. So here comes the point where I should call you amazing, but I'll call you, I know, red carpetly fabulous. And that's it, from now on you are legally red carpetly fabulous. And to prove it, we will show your nicknames, that's right, you can see your nicknames on the screens of your smartphones. So, once again, we'd like to congratulate you on winning some money, $5.75, isn't that nice? It is nice at any time. So congrats guys, thank you for your attention and thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience and thank you for your knowledge. Thank you for your luck and thank you for your well-deserved success. Thanks for joining us during this broadcast. See you next time and as always, never stop thinking and see you later. Goodbye everybody. <laughs>